we'll start this podcast by trashing the entire Lincoln. city. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it'll go well. You know, it'll be fine. Yeah. I only live here, I'm not born and bred here before. Oh, <clears throat> where are you from? A little bit of everywhere. Bit of everywhere. Military <laughs> kid, so I've been sort of about Travelling kid. Plus I'm half German, half English, so nice. a little bit of everything there. That explains the name. True. <laughs> I did wonder because I was reading it. I was like, I don't know how to pronounce it. Verena. Verena, and I was, yeah. I was like, it could be Verena, could be Verena. Yeah. And I was, I went through a while. Of it. I was like, yeah, I'm just not giving it a try. I was going to so ask. Surprised you didn't type it into Google and say, how do you pronounce it? Oh no, I don't go that far. <laughs> that takes some proactiveness, which I just don't have. Either way, welcome to the podcast. Thank you. It's my first podcast. Your well. first podcast. I know. Mm-hmm. There's not that many in Lincoln. True. True. I have a few friends that have podcasts, just not in the country. They're <laughs> so harder to hard do. Hard to be on yeah, it. Yeah. And yeah. So yeah, this is my first one. It'll be fine. <laughs> I hate listening to my own voice back, so that might be a challenge. I mean, I'm exactly the same. I don't listen to them back. I don't edit. Okay. Oh. Mm. So. Kind of figured. You just no. kind of let it ride and see what happens. Because I don't like listening to myself. So. No, me neither. No. And then people comment and they say, oh, you said this and I found it interesting. And I'm like, oh, did I say that? Oh, I don't remember. I don't recall saying that. Maybe I said that. Who knows? <laughs> Either way, for the people listening, tell them what you do. I'm Verena. I have my own embroidery business, Fabric Tattoos. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm an embroidery artist, doing everything by hand, no machines, and I focus my sort of style is very traditional tattoo inspired, Mm -hmm. as well as sometimes just throwing my own flavour in there. And I use a lot of reclaim materials because I don't really want to contribute to the waste sort of crisis, and I sort of know quite a bit about like the fashion industry and fabric um, like production. And it's kind of a mess, yeah. so I'd rather use things that already exist and can give them a new life and a new purpose and make them pretty again. It's a good, good cause. Even like frames and stuff, I guess I can hand off eBay and yeah. people that are just gonna throw them out. I may as well take them. Steal them. I'll, I'll hoard for Go you. I mean, my house is full of stuff like that where I pick it up and I'm like, I will use that later. And then six years later, mm. I'm looking at it like, no, I haven't used you. I, I need know. to do a clear out of my cupboards. Yeah. <laughs> I just imagine just like a, a, you know, like when you open the doors and everything falls. Mm, that's kind and, of like yeah. my fabric drawers at the minute. Yeah. They, they're struggling to close, which is good because people are donating stuff to me and that's nice. But yeah. I'm like, I need to use this stuff. Just buy another cabinet. <laughs> well, there's that, but also I'm limited just the room in my parents' house. Okay. As yeah. a studio and yeah. my living space. So yeah. until space. I make a super bank doing what I do it's, it's going to be a struggle you could do one of those things where you, you like cover your ceiling in netting and then you can utilise your ceiling for storage space I'm 5'3 I mean ladders exist I'm 5'3 <laughs> <laughs> I forget people are smaller <laughs> yeah I am I'm an average female average female whereas I can touch my roof and yeah no. I realised that the other day when I had to take my fire alarm down and I did it, and I was like, oh, yeah, I'm tall. I, I stand on my desk chair to get to, like, cupboards that are about as high as that one. So, like, the, near to the ceiling cupboards. Yeah. Because I've got, like, a built-in in my room. Yeah. I have to stand on the chair. That's fair. How long have you been sewing for then? Um, I, sorry, started, like, July, I guess, of... How many years has it been? <laughs> I think 2018? Okay, so a couple of years. 20... 17 either way Two, yeah. yeah it was um i just sort of picked it up as a hobby just to have something to do while i watch netflix aimlessly yeah. and didn't have a job so did that right after i sort of graduated from my undergrad and then decided to go thank you to go and do a master's mm-hmm. and when i was accepted they send you like a, a uni jumper okay like a free one and it was a large but I thought when I go back, I don't want to be just another blue jumper walking around campus. 
so I wanted to customize it a little bit and also just challenge myself Mm -hmm. to upcycling a piece of my own clothing and because it was free I was like I'm not that invested in it I already had a Lincoln Uni one from my undergrad so I was like if I fuck it up it's fine um so I tweeted the uni and asked is there any rules against customizing the hoodie because I'm you know defacing the logo or whatever just thought I'd check yeah um and they tweeted me back and were like no we encourage it like go ahead send us pictures when you're done like do what you want I was like cool so I I embroidered like this whole tree of life sort of thing on the front of my hoodie if you see my Instagram you'll see it far down um and from there people like oh my god that's cool do this for me do that for me so I was like okay yeah and then a business was born and I've never stopped learning since (laughs) I find it strange that you asked for permission to do it. Why? I don't know. I feel like if it was me, I'd, I'd have just done it and then... There's that. But I didn't want to do it. Wait for them to tell me to take it down. Well, there's that. But I didn't want to do it because I knew it would take... it. Like, it took me six weeks to yeah. sew it. And there's like, all day, every day. Um, and I, I, I didn't want to make it, wear it on campus, mm-hmm. in the cold of September, October, November, and then have a member of staff something say, you need to take that off, you can't be wearing something that's defacing, like, or anything like that. Yeah. I didn't think they'd have a problem with it, no. but I just wanted to check with them. Um, maybe I just invite trouble. <laughs> maybe. maybe. Maybe I'm just too cautious. <laughs> but, I mean, it only took five seconds. It's always better to ask permission. True. Not so. what it's art, though, I don't... I mean, Depends on the art. Maybe. What did you do your master's in, then? Creative writing. Creative writing. Mm. Is that what you studied when you did your formal degree? Like your first uh, no, my undergrad, I did film and TV production. Okay. Graduated at Lincoln because I, uh, I changed unis for my third year. I was right. at ARU in Cambridge for literally just FTV production. Yeah. And um, it was just too small. I hated it. <laughs> uh, there was a lot of controversy with them, like tutors and stuff. So I decided to transfer and yeah. go back home and save my maintenance loan and not spend it all on rent so i did that yeah. and then yeah they just took me in and i just completed under the media production course so That's technically cool. i have a degree in media production but i'm just ftv That's fair. you're the second person i've interviewed this year who's done like film production i mean thing. there's plenty of us there is but I find they're harder to find. Well, in Lincoln, isn't the course like a 300 student yeah, intake so or something? Now. But that's because different. they've like blended courses now as well. Like my course doesn't exist. Oh, right. They blended that into media production. Uh, what course did you do? I did contemporary lens media. Uh huh. So it was yeah, like that's been blended for a while now. Yeah. Fine art based, mm. bit more that kind of like dredge. Because I was I, I wanted to do media production, but then I had no interest in TV, and I I saw it as very this is how you learn to be a cameraman for TV. And I didn't want to do that, so I was like, oh, I'll go down the fine art route. And then they got rid of my course, and I was like... Well, yeah, I think they've turned it more into a module <laughs> than a course. Just do one, yeah. you know, one module on fine art. I mean, I'm quite glad that I went into the media production course after the first two years, because I didn't right. want to do all of the blended yeah. crap. Like, I didn't want to do newspapers and journals. Like, I was like, yeah. I'm not into it. Yeah. That's why I went for an FTV course in the first place. Um so I was quite glad. And plus I could then specialise in screenwriting, which is what I wanted to do for my final major project anyway. Yeah. And I couldn't do that at my first uni. But you've made a departure from that now. Have you have you stopped that? Not really. No. I'm still really passionate about it. It's still like I'd say I'm kind of two people in a way. Like there's the artist, the embroidery drawing that side of me and then there's the writer side of me. Mm-hmm. And after I did um my undergrad and I studied and basically you know became really good at scripts <laughs> but um not to turn to my own horn but no. I got really good at scripts, got really good scripts. <laughs> um I decided I wanted to learn more about the craft of novel writing and description okay. because in in script writing you can't be very descriptive that's I found that really hard because it's you, really hard to you train get out so yourself, used yeah. to just writing narrative lines yeah you find you can write a play yeah but as soon as you start writing fiction, yeah, so, you're just lost. Yeah. yeah, with with script, you have to really boil it down to what can you see on the yeah. screen and then just dialogue and action, and that's it. You can't go into the depths of their emotional being. Um, so that's why I went back to do my MA in creative writing to sort of get that side of it again, try my hand at fiction, yeah, 
um, and see where I lie with that because with my undergrad I found that I centered more towards like not teen dramas but young adult drama okay more and definitely more television based than film um I don't know why I would just prefer the long form narrative of television yeah. um so that's where I I like to be okay. more drama based so I wanted to see if I went into fiction mm-hmm. where I'd sit with that and it's quite different ish um, I, I found when I did my um, masters, I found my little home in young adult horror. Okay, yeah. And I hate horror movies. You hate horror movies. I don't like horror movies. But you wrote young adult horror. But I like writing horror. I don't know why. It's really. Why do you weird. hate horror movies? <sighs> what puts you off them? I I don't know if, if it's because it's the the form of feature films okay. limit. Like plot the, the anyway minutes. so when it's horror they basically just throw plot out the window yeah completely and just do cheap thrills Most of and time. i hate that <laughs> okay and things like annabelle and putting, oh yeah but the conjuring and, yeah. Purge and blah, blah, blah. Yeah. all of that i'm like no i can't deal not that i'm like scared of it i just don't no. see the point of it that's my problem with horror is i can't suspend disbelief enough to believe that it's scary yeah and I think that's what its intention is. Mm. And if I can't do that, I'm like, I'll just get bored. And like you say, yeah, you lose the plot and you're like, well, mm. this is just gore now. And yeah. Gore's so I love scary. like TV horror, kind of like um, Sabrina, like the new Sabrina series. I haven't seen any of the new Sabrina. touches on the sort of horror element of TV. And just because, I don't know why, but I think maybe it's just what, since like the streaming services have kicked off hmm. and that they've done very well with their own productions that they actually have the money to put into the production yeah and don't rely on like cgi yeah and they have actual real prosthetics like and actual I prefer effect. It. Yeah. and they do it well yeah. so I, and, and their story even, to follow and relationships <laughs> to follow and it's just better depth you, yeah. you want that depth maybe that i could see that you get a lot more depth out of a tv length mm. but then you also i think you run the risk of them overdoing characters there is that by trying to force development all that kind of thing so you like you have a character for a, a very long time and you see them in one way and how they would behave in situations and then if they go against that it can ruin a lot of the previous work yeah but at the same time yeah you've got longer to develop not just the, an hour and yeah. a half and i'm sure a lot of shows have fallen into that the yeah. trap of basically killing in characters i find i think i don't know i can't decide if TVs are a lot more ruthless in terms of shows. Mm. I feel like maybe you have to go hard quite early because so many shows now get cancelled. True. Like you have to put your all in for that season one because it's the first if you three don't, episodes. Yeah. Whereas we got used to way back when you could have the pilot would go out and it wouldn't be very good. But you give it a yeah. week. Yeah. And then you watch said, episode one yeah. and episode two and you'd be like, eh, 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 maybe. And then season two would get made. You're like, oh, season two is really good. But it's now as if you can't grip them completely in the pilot, yeah. it's dead. If you can't trounce another show yeah. within that season, you, you, you're screwed. What did I watch recently? I watched, um, is it Dirk Gently? Oh my god, I love Dirk Gently. <laughs> but I didn't know it had been cancelled. <laughs> so bet, I got to the end cry? and I was like, what? How? But no, I need more. cry when you're like, it's over forever. And the amount got... of times that fans have tried to bring it back it's... and have talked to the creators and been like, the petitions have been signed, many, many petitions have been yeah. signed. And they're like, I'm sorry, we just can't. It was so sad. I actually sewed a whole Dirk Gently themed hoodie for a friend um, who also loved Dirk Gently. So it's got the ever bulb on the front with like a hand that's all thread painted. And um, then on the pocket, it says, it's a thing. Right. (laughs) And then it's just got all the character symbols down the arm in their colours but yeah it's a thing I was very disappointed and I, I found out it had been cancelled by talking to a friend who we I said oh I'm started watching it and he was like oh okay I didn't mention it I Just recommend everybody watch it because it's amazing <laughs> it is amazing it's, it's a whole sort of new kind of TV show yeah um, but be prepared <laughs> to be disappointed <laughs> to disappoint. when, when you finish season two I think it was and then yeah. they didn't pick up three and it's sad and it, it I think that's hurts. what's worse that it didn't just get one season that it got two seasons so you had long enough to be fully invested yeah. like if it, if it ends after a season you're like okay i can leave that be i don't care about that mm. but two seasons 
and, and it was so open for it as well it did it yeah. left it open for him it's it was just such sad. a nice ending mm. i recently rewatching uh community oh yeah and i hadn't seen season six and mm-hmm. i'm kind of disappointed by it mm-hmm. and I'm, I, I'm at that stage where i'm like i feel like you should have cancelled this way earlier than you did and that's the thing you know you never really know with a tv show how far mm. it's going to carry but then you can say the same with feature films like quite often the third one ruins the franchise yeah so definitely and then they reboot it in the fourth and the fifth and then <laughs> and the sixth and seventh and the eighth and ninth. That's a trademark of horror. <laughs> Just rebooting. Do oh let's do the same story but change the character and make yeah. her more dumb. Make them run even further. It's just the classic girl in a apparently has full makeup, has been oh, yeah. sleeping, but is wearing just like a t shirt and a bra and instead of running out the front door she runs upstairs. Of course. Because then you're trapped. And I'm like, mm, you dumb, you deserve to die. I feel like, I don't know if I could live with myself if I was in like a dangerous situation and then I did get myself trapped because of the amount of time I've spent trashing horror films for doing exactly the same. <laughs> I made the worst decision. Yeah, such <laughs> like, a hypocrite. Just kill me. <laughs> yeah, I've, Take if, me, if I you know, made that mistake, I'd be like, yeah. you know what? I deserve this. Just, yeah, this happens. We'll go further down the line. Like, I'll make better decisions. We're not going to evolve if I remain within the human genome. No. Like, we need to just kill it now. Definitely not. So, yeah, that's that's my major problem with it. Psychological thrillers I love. Okay. And I like gory movies or, like, gore within movies. Yeah. Just like, not... my dad practically raised me on, like, martial arts films. Okay. And we'd get to, like, Ninja Assassin and there's people, like, chopping heads in half and I'm there like... <laughs> Wait, are these good martial arts films or bad, yeah, yeah, bad they're, martial they're arts They're good, films? proper, okay. the proper ones. Because I like watching terrible from martial the, arts from films. country. I, I like watching the bad ones. <laughs> Because the have you ever watched Kung Pao? I have watched oh, Kung Pao. It's so good. It is so good. That was Such like a good film. Our car travel movie when we were kids. Kung Pao. Because we have we had the the sort of big Ford car with our yeah. TV screens in the back seat in the seats of the passenger seats. So on long trips, on our caravanning holidays, we'd yeah. watch um, we'd watch Kung Pao, um, National Security for reasons with Martin Lawrence. Don't know why, but that was a re- repeat. Um, I, I can't remember what else, but that was Kung Pao was definitely one of them. Oh. And considering <laughs> I would have been quite young at the time, I don't know if it was entirely appropriate for me. I mean, there's nothing too bad in it. Like, it's been a while since I've seen it, mm. but at the same time, I can't think of anything which jumps out of this is terrible, mm. like, shouldn't be shown to a child. Because, I mean, I guess you wouldn't understand it if you saw it. True. Well, yeah. There's a lot of that. It's a little risque. A little bit risque. Just on the edge of risk. <laughs> There's a three-breasted woman in it. But yeah, that's, that's not necessarily obscene, though. No, but I mean, as a young woman, <laughs> as a child, it's just female, expanding your growing view of up, body being image. like, what's going to happen? It's like that's completely natural. That, <laughs> this doesn't is matter okay, what I encounter. Yeah. I mean, yeah, maybe. As long as you're not spent your life looking for that, like, no, I've, I've seen it. I know it exists. No, therefore. I realize it is a, yeah, and you know, just the imagination of man. So it's fine. Yeah. I'm happy with two. That's okay. <laughs> That's not a secret dream. Just, no, it's just... not. I don't. You know, I'm not saving up. No. For surgery no. on that one, I'm afraid. No. <laughs> uh, nah. No. Nah. So, I obviously found you through Instagram. True. And I, there was two things which I kind of touched on when I contacted you and said, "Hey, you should probably come on the podcast." Mm-hmm. Um, which obviously... super nice, by the way. Uh, thank you. I do try. I, 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 I'm always a bit weird about approaching people for podcasts, especially people I've never really spoken to before, because mm-hmm. I'm like, essentially, I'm just going to slide into your DM <laughs> and be like, you but should like, come to my house and be recorded. <laughs> um, but we can talk about whatever you want during. Um, so, yeah. Uh, the Sims. Yes, The Sims. Why The Sims? I just love The Sims. I don't know why. I love it. I grew up playing it, you know, from Sims 1. Yeah. Did you ever play it? I thought, I've played a lot of Sims. Yeah. So... I've just kind of been a diehard Sims fan my entire life anyway. And when Sims 4 came out, I mean, I was only like your sort of, your vanilla player. Like okay. I only really, yes, I used Rosebud and Motherload occasionally. I knew those cheats. That was fine. Did the I thing. I like you just give context to that because there's people who are listening people who are just listening like, will know what I mean. What is she talking about? <laughs> you know. You're part of the community. You know. I don't feel like you can be a vanilla Sims player though. I think, you, no, you can be. I feel like you, you dive in, you play for a month, and then you go, I've been playing Sims for like six hours a day for a month. Um, I'll stop. That's vanilla. And then you go back for like another When year. you're not playing challenges, if you're not 
doing crazy builds if you're not using oh, yeah. the build sheets and things like that yeah then yeah i can say you're kind of a vanilla gamer okay but um when i i think about the same time i started embroidering i actually just sort of fell into youtube of course as one as you does do. yeah Down as the one falls hole. into youtube and i found um just videos of someone who made a tiny house in sims 4 okay using like I mean, crazy build sheets, but literally made a, if any, if anyone knows Sims, a four by four house, fully functional right. for a single Sims player. Considering like my entire life, I've made a bathroom, a three by three tile. Yeah. <laughs> to make an entire house in a four by four tile. I was like, how the hell is this possible? And for anyone who actually wants to look it up, it was James Turner YT. And I kind of love him. He's Australian. Um... And then from there, I just sort of watched all of his videos, mm -hmm. figured out that Let's Plays exist. Yeah. And got, like, super into them. Yeah. I feel like if I were a sim, my video gaming skill upped quite drastically just by watching, watching the videos. Plays, yeah. And, like, learning more about the game and mm. just sort of falling in love with it in a different way. Um, and I haven't not watched a sims video since. Like every day, like I, I have my morning coffee and I watch you Sims, Sims videos. I watch James. I watch Deligracy and um, Vic Sala, Although she doesn't always do Sims, she does other games too. And yeah, James is my, he's my number one. Were you James you publicised yours through Instagram stories? I did because I kind of wanted just to have a go a little bit, but okay. because my laptop currently sucks because it's like a decade old um and it's like got an i3 processor it's pretty sucky on, on the edge of <laughs> yeah so sims when i play sims especially with like all the expansion packs and everything it's yeah. really laggy okay so i couldn't just stream, stream it right because i was like this would be painful for everybody so i thought i'll just play around if i'm playing it i'll see if i just take photos as i go along and post them on my stories see yeah. if anyone sort of enjoys experiencing it along with me and quite a few people have responded to me saying that yes that was really funny i really enjoyed yeah. it the level of interaction yeah. is what got me yeah. initially because initially i was like ah oh, you know it's just playing sims and then it was like the story yeah. you were trying to make as well as it's like okay it's gotten a little darker <laughs> and it's gotten a little more interesting <laughs> it's not just like because i've i've a friend of mine's um um, so you didn't go on airplane mode. It's just that's, that's not that's just Wi-Fi doing things. Um, yeah, she does like fashion for Sims. I can't remember the name of it. Oh, CC. I don't know. Custom content. I don't know. I didn't. When they told me, I was like fashion for Sims, and then I kind of twitched off. And they showed me some videos, and I was like, I'm not interested with what's going on here. Mm -hmm. And then when I saw it, I was like, actually, no, there's, there's like there's layers to this which is going on. And then it was just yeah, the fact that you'd put a lot of things to public vote. I was like, oh, yeah. oh okay. It was like yeah, a reality show. <laughs> I know, it's fun. Because when I like um, a streamer that I watch quite a lot, but I don't watch him live because yeah. he's in America and he streams from like 11 p.m. America until 5 a.m. Right. America. So that's crazy times here. Yeah. And I'm asleep, I need sleep. So um, he posts everything onto YouTube. Right. Um, anyway, so I sort of just catch up. Um, and his name is Dr. Glue On. He's pretty funny and he's a comedy streamer okay. so he does pretty wacky things and he always does wacky things and he always involves a lot of polls with his chat mm -hmm. um so that's kind of where i got that idea from okay and i just wanted to practice with it and yes i do plan to actually stream because i just bought a new laptop that's going to be like killer and i'm gonna have fun with it and i will reboot the child labor challenge <laughs> <laughs> for anyone who doesn't know <laughs> Yeah. It is exactly what it says. It's yeah. a child leave challenge. <laughs> I have a mom sim who just gets pregnant by random meth and um, raises her children to do everything for her. She doesn't work. She She's doesn't even her pay life. her own bills. She doesn't clean. She doesn't do anything. The kids have to do everything. And But they also need to get like good grades. <laughs> and the pressure you're putting these children up. on. I know, but it's amazing. It's insane. And um, I kind of altered it. And I... I don't know if anyone else has ever done this before. I've not seen it on any streamers that I watch. Um, so I guess I kind of coined it. But um, I also make like the daughters marry out. So when they become young adults, yeah. they marry out and 
the mother takes a dowry for their marriage. <laughs> so any money that the husband brings to the family, she keeps and they like just get taken What's out. What's going to happen when she dies, though? One of the daughters will have to take over. You should make them, like, I don't know, compete. Oh, <laughs> that could be like an interim episode. Yeah. Like, once mom like, is like an elderly Royale and she's about for... to die. Yeah. yeah, I'd be like, let's bring the daughters back and do like a Sim Survivor challenge. Hunger Games for Sims. Yeah, easily done with the cow plant. Very easily done. Yeah. And now that with the, the do, new tiny living stuff pack, there's a Murphy bed that can kill them. <laughs> See, this is my, like my experience with Sims. Kind of, where did it stop? Probably about around Sims Three, because mm. I've never, I've never bought the Sims. I've just had access to the Sims uh-huh, on, uh-huh. on a reasonable basis. Obviously. Like, go to a friend's house yeah, and play it. Obviously, never had it directly at my own house. No, wouldn't do that to never the media industry. Accessed it, um, yeah. but yeah, it was. I was very much. It would be you know, play for two months. And then drop oh, off, <laughs> and then you kind of—it's the same with like Age of Empires, like anything simulation based, yeah. where you kind of you get so into it. And oh then yeah, you drop totally. It, and then you go back to it, and yeah. you do exactly the same thing. It's like a weird cycle that everyone just kind of accepts that that's how those games work. Yeah, I mean, I haven't played Sims in ages, yeah. but that's mainly because my laptop sucks, and it's just painful. Yeah, if I can get through essentially like two Sims days in three hours. <laughs> It's just not totally worth it for me no, <laughs> currently. Definitely. So I am waiting patiently for my new baby to arrive. And Very nice. she a beast. And that's going to be my future. But I find, it, I find it interesting that you're so heavily invested in something which is narrative based, considering your, your interest in like film production and background and creative writing. Mm, kind of all that comes all together, comes together, doesn't it? Yeah. But then at the same time, you sew. I know. And that you don't do narrative Sorry. in it. Not really. Do you think you could? Probably, if I was to say like a tapestry, I guess. But you could time. Do a tapestry. <laughs> I, I need to live. No. So I kind of need. Who needs to live? Money when to you live. Can, like, create. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I guess in the in the narrative of my sewing is my own journey with uh, it, yeah. and as a business, mm. the journey of my yeah that see it works. It is. Sort of. Kind of. Definitely not cringy. <laughs> Fine. <laughs> I mean, it's not what I'd put on my shop, but then again, no, I don't think I'm great at business. So. <laughs> it's a learning curve for everybody. Oh, definitely. Definitely is. Yeah. I'm still learning a lot about it. Um, but yeah, it's... How do you find that, like, running your own... Business? Yeah. It's a mixed bag. Yeah. It's a mixed bag. I think... If there was some kind of mentor I could go to for it, it would be obviously be a lot easier and I think yeah. I'd probably stress a lot less about it. And in the flip side, I think the only reason it's business e is because you need money to live. Yeah. So it's just because of consumerism that it needs to be a business. Yeah. Otherwise, it probably wouldn't be and I would just make pretty things. <laughs> you know, but yeah. If it was a quick thing, like if I could do it as a hub, like just hobby, yeah, that would be nice. And then just every now and then do a car boot or whatever and see if it sells. But if it doesn't, like you just end up with drawers and cupboards full of Clubs. art, and you're like, what do I do with it? It's not being loved. Do you feel bad? I mean, yours is different in a way. Like yours interests me because, so I do my creations. Obviously, I give them to people or sell them. Mm. Usually, just end up giving them to people because I'm terrible. Um, Obviously, they go home and put it on their walls, mm. whereas yours is designed to be worn. Some of it, and a lot of it is also to be displayed. Okay. So there's, like, two different sides of it. So, yes, you can do custom wearable stuff, wearable art. Mm-hmm. And I do love doing that because I think, again, looking back at fashion and fast fashion, everybody just looks the freaking same. Yeah. And I'm kind of sick of it. <laughs> That's better. And it's depressing. Yeah. Going into town. And I think I, it kind of hit me when I basically wore the jacket I'm wearing now, which is a new look jacket and it was gifted to me. But I think I saw the same jacket about four times in one day. And yeah. I was like, I hate my life. Yeah. And when in town, like all there are pretty much is places like New Look, Next, Primark, H&M. It's all fast fashion. Yeah. And when you really look into it, it's really bad. 
for the environment. Yeah. And it's all pretty much plastic yeah. or oil. Yeah. And it's terrible. So I started then gravitating more towards like vintage or charity shops. Um, and then just, again, just upcycling clothes for myself. And like with the with the hoodie and with doing that, I just want other people to also express themselves through mm-hmm. their clothing and to have a different aspect of what they're wearing. Because everyone's personalities are different. There's a lot of eccentric people in the world. And a lot of people like art. They do. So if they can wear it, why not? Do you get more of a, I don't know, fulfillment out of something someone can wear than maybe something I which they put so. in their home? A little bit. I think it's a mix. Again, it's mixed. I, I think I just get the same satisfaction from anyone who just wants to invest in me and as an artist. And is okay, like, yeah, yeah. you're an artist. I like your work. Make me something. And I'm like, oh yeah. my God, you're so nice. Okay, fine. <laughs> That's great. Send me pictures, please. But it's Cliché. really nice when they do, yeah. like, if it is wearable art and they send me pictures, like, with the Dirk Gently hoodie. Yeah. She, like, every now and again will send me, like, I'm taking Dirk out today. I'm like, I love you so much. I miss him. <laughs> and that one I definitely miss because yeah. a lot of love went into that one because I also love Dirk Gently. Well, that's the other thing as well. Like, it takes you a while to make pieces yes. because it's such a long process. Yes. Disconnecting from that has got to be harder than let's say something you can make in an hour or two hours yeah yeah it definitely is yeah um if it's something that's been a wee bit of a challenge (laughs) it's more happy to see it more yeah a wee bit more of a challenge than i had expected then i'm kind of like oh finally gone like take it love it (laughs) treat it well It's like, Just, this yeah. one you can adopt. Yes, this one can This go. is a closed adoption. This is a nuisance. This one is an open adoption. Please leave. On regular photographs yeah. as it gets older. <laughs> like, that's it. <laughs> but again, like, even when it's wearable art, if yeah. they, you know, grow out of it, or if the clothing piece gets tatty, but the work is still pretty good, then mm. I even say to them, when you're ready to not wear it anymore, I can turn it into something else. Yeah. You know, even, especially with things like hoodies, and like, you know, you can easily turn it into a cushion. Yeah. You can turn it into a framed piece and then you can keep it forever so although because what i do is by hand and Mm. i you know have a decent rate (laughs) because i'm not stupid yeah it is fairly expensive when you go for bigger things but it will essentially last forever yeah and i do always offer like one year's free repairs because it just just makes sense it's like a warranty yeah just in case if you do snag it yeah or something snaps or breaks, and you know, yeah. I'll, I'll fix it. It is quite fragile. Yeah. Medium. <laughs> so it's like, if rather than if they, you know, accidentally ripped a couple of stitches within yeah. the year and then don't wear it, and I'm like, well, that wasn't the point. I'll fix it for yeah. you so you can keep wearing it and not buy into fast fashion. That makes sense. So your work, you say, is love is based on like tattoo style. Mm-hmm. Do you have tattoos? No. You have no tattoos. This is why. <laughs> This is why you do the fabric tattoos? Yes. Okay. Because... Can you get tattoos or are you one of those people who can't? I mean, there's no medical reason why I can't. Okay. Um, I guess I'm just not exactly indecisive, but I've... Like, growing up, yes, I had a couple of ideas of what I wanted as tattoos on me and I still kind of want them. Yeah. But I am a pussy, so <laughs> I'm too afraid to get it done and I always have that, I don't know, that little voice in my head from my parents saying, you know, when you're 80, you're not going to like it. Mm -hmm. You're not, you're going to want to hide it. So it's going to be somewhere where you can, you know, cover it up easy. And I'm like, yeah, but also I could just look like a sick biker grandma. That's, I never understood that phrase. I've seemed like more of a challenge of, oh, when you're old, you want to cover it up. And I'm like, when I'm old, I'm going to give even less of a shit than I do now because I'm old. Mm. Like, (laughs) so there's that argument. And then there's also, I want it to be good. There, there is that. There is so a fear. to get yeah. it good, yeah. I need to go to someone who's good. They cost money. I don't have it. That's fair. Yeah. So there's there's simple. that little catch twenty two. Yeah. Um. So then I was like, but I could tattoo my clothes and have the best of both worlds. <laughs> <laughs> and then mine are a lot easier to get take off. It's true. Yeah. You know, you can easily remove that tattoo and and, and put something else in there. It doesn't have to be a cover-up. What is it about, like, traditional tattoo style, though? Oh, the colours, I guess. A lot of the colours, the style, the shaping. um, It's, with a lot of it, it's simple yet detailed. Okay. Uh, I don't know, it's just something about the traditional... Like, I always 
when I was growing up, I watched a lot of um, LA Inc. Okay. And like New York, I watched a lot of tattoo shows. And I don't know, it's just something, it's just something about it something that calls to me. And I just think it's really creative. And I like love color. Yeah. And I don't know why, but I'm just attracted to color. And that, to me, traditional tattoos are the most colorful. Yeah. That's usually why I avoid them. Because <laughs> I, I always look at them, like I've tried doing traditional tattoo style. And much like graphic design, mm. I suck at it. <laughs> because I can't keep the work I do clean. Like clean lines and bold colors and everything like that. I avoid doing color work like mm-hmm. the plague because I find it hard. Um, and so it's like I always delve, end up delving back into sketchy black and white styles. Whereas, yeah, traditional tattoos, I'm always like, eh, I can't do that. See, when I draw. It's like a mystery to me. <laughs> when I do my drawing and my sketching, yeah. it's black and white. Black and white. It's black, black and white, simple because, yeah, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna mess around with painting and, and color yeah. on paper, but. I know when I transfer it and sew on it, yeah. I can do it in colour and do it well. That's fair. Yeah. I'm better at the embroidery <laughs> than I am at the drawing. I find like traditional tattoo style as well I find quite interesting because it's a lot of it's like heavily symbolic. So much of that, which whereas like you get like photorealistic tattoos, mm-hmm. you can put a lot of detail into it so it's easier to see what's actually being said. True. Whereas traditional stuff's because it's so essentially basic in its imagery the imagery becomes way more important. Mm-hmm. Do you find you do that with your work or do you find you're just going for visuals? Mainly visuals. I mean, some things have, have meaning. I love a good pun. Okay. So I do like a good pun. A good this pun. is why I like my recent Think Cap because it's my thinking cap. I did like the Think Cap. <laughs> but with what I designed with it, it was not coloring in the letters but coloring outside the letters coloring mm-hmm. outside the lines you know think outside the box you know, eh, yeah. it's all working like that and putting on your thinking cap a lot of florals just... as well yeah that was just a challenge as well because i don't do a lot of floral okay. unless it's like your traditional rose which is what i've done on my jacket yeah um and i love roses so there's that connection with traditional tattoos as well yeah um but apart from that yeah i think everything in some way, the challenge for me, or well, the things that I make, this that aren't necessarily custom orders. Like this week, I've done a lot of sort of passion projects, and in a way, I've been challenging myself with a few of them, trying different stitches and different styles. So, yeah. everything just keeping, what's the word, learning. Exactly, I am a nerd. I do love to learn, which is why I've got two degrees. So, <laughs> that's fair. Whereas I, I saw the education system as like more of a, a nuisance. To, <laughs> to, I to did me. up until the undergrad, yeah. yeah. But what's weird, when I look back at education, I've gotten better with every different level. Okay. I've gotten like upper grade with every level, which makes no sense if you think yeah. you know, every level's supposed no, to be harder. I, I, went, I think I went down like <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> gradually. That should be the way it yeah. goes, but I don't know. I'm weird, I guess. And I went like... C student yeah. at high school and A levels then, to then like a two one undergrad and then it was like distinction in me. I was like, what is my life? I don't know. And I haven't written in like a year, so that's working. So technically, need to do a doctorate so you can. Oh, write. I played with that idea. Yeah. Like right out the gate of my MA, I was like, oh, PhD. <laughs> I was like, I know what I'd want to study. What would you want to study? I would want to study um, how to adapt um book to television basically in guarantee success okay in the adaptation of book to television because right. it's kind of hit and miss yeah and there's a lot of adaptation of book to film but not necessarily book to tv yeah and now with like netflix and amazon and they're kind of killing it yeah. with adaptations i wanted to do that with a focus on horror novels okay and specifically in my like dissertation which is a creative dissertation so you basically just write a bunch of stuff yeah. for 80,000 words yep. um i would adapt the darren shan demonata series okay um into like the first season of okay. book one okay that's interesting you are kind of you are kind of a person of conflict yeah within yourself mm-hmm, mm-hmm. that you have such a in-depth kind of want for essentially dark narrative and narrative-led things, but then the things you create are quite light, quite colourful, quite positive messaged. Mm-hmm. I know. <laughs> Aren't I so deep? 
That was really bad English, but aren't uh, I so, so deep? deep? Definitely the title of this podcast. <laughs> <laughs> Found it. <laughs> aren't Done. I so deep? Nailed it. Done. But then that, that kind of like brings me to so the other thing which we kind of like talked about mm. is the true crime and your yes. interest in true crime. Oh, I've been obsessed with like Criminal Minds again since I was a kid. <laughs> again, it's TV why. though. Again. It's yeah, and it's TV. And yeah. I mean, I basically grew up on television. Yeah. It was my only friend. No, it wasn't my only friend. <laughs> You're being a real dark picture of your life right there. Um, but I found a lot of friends in TV. Okay. In characters. And I connected with characters. And like I grew up watching Charmed. And I would rewatch the whole set of Charmed every year. Um, so I, I love that. I don't know why, but I do. And like Friends. We'd mm -hmm. watch Friends every year. And then Criminal Minds kind of just snuck its way in there when it came on TV. Yeah. And I just loved it. It was the whole criminology thing, the psychology of it all. I was super into psychology um, in high school. So that's what got me. And then it was just actually what they write is yeah. insane. Yeah. What they come up with is sick. And I mean sick in like a good way and also <laughs> disturbing. In a bad way at the same time, yeah. But... And that's kind of what I fell like in love with it. And then when like true crime stuff started coming out, like I watched the Ted Bundy tapes and I was mm. like, this is freaking like yeah. weird. Um, things about, I can't remember what the, the show was called, but about the abduction or a girl who was abducted essentially by her neighbor. Oh uh, yeah. Sure, and yeah. he tricked her into having sex with him by claiming to be like the alien's wish. Yeah. And that's how yeah. he essentially abused her for many, many years. And she let him. Yeah. Because she thought she was saving the world. That didn't end how I expected it to end. Me neither. That's I, like, I was entranced in that. Mm. Like fully. Every, every turn that was like getting one me. Night. And then when it kind of came round to her like, escaping herself and then writing a book about it and going, yeah. oh, I, like, that did not resolve how I expected it to resolve. No. In any and way, the fact that he showed up. Yeah. And was like, their lies. Yeah. I didn't do that. And blah, tried blah, to keep it And going. it was like, um... The involvement of the parents got me as well. Like, the I level of their so involvement. so stupid. There was, so, there was something on that like, where... You know when you watch a true crime show and it gets too weird? Yeah. And you're like, this can't be true. There's got to be, mm. like, an embellishment going on here. So then you have to fact check it. Like you start so just, like don't you're watching it's like I'm just, I, need to, I don't go that just, I need to see I need to see what happened. It's like with Ted Bundy though, like I didn't know a lot of the stuff which was in that. I knew enough about him Yeah and what he did. But with like the finer details and I was like, Ted Bundy escaped. Did he escape? Surely this can't be true at one point. And he yep, nope, definitely, the stupidest, definitely escaped. Stupidest guard in all of the world. Yeah. Left him in a freaking room. <laughs> By himself. With a window. With a window. With a window. That was not locked. And thought, eh, it'll be fine. Yeah. It'll be fine, right? He's only a murderer. <laughs> sure. <laughs> This'll go well. And I've uncuffed him, so there's that. Yeah. He's not gonna See, run. He's not gonna run. He's noble. I mean, he was on the second floor. That's not that that's hard to jump out of. Like, you're not going to die <laughs> jumping from the second floor. You might break an ankle if you do you it might. wrong. Yeah. But I if feel you like tuck and roll, you might be fine. Ted Bundy gets... He's one of those ones as well. I feel like he gets too much credit. Like, see, people see him as, like, this mastermind. Because he was very charismatic. Yeah. So he basically just manipulated yeah. everyone with his charisma. And it was, like, Which twisted. I thought was and interesting. Also, dudes be stupid, so... I thought that was like interesting though like you were getting a lot of media within that documentary which was mm. like he's this mastermind he's going around doing this and then when as soon as he got into a courtroom everyone was like no he's actually just insane like there's something broken inside of yeah, him yeah he was a very broken yeah. man he's like representing himself then, and killing himself by doing it yeah but during that documentary there was a lot of things he did yeah. when he was free and even when he had escaped and I was like that's stupid yeah like you want to get caught You're doing this to get caught. Yeah. And yet you don't get caught because it's America. Because <laughs> it's America in like the 70s or yeah. whenever it was. Well, yeah, it's because it was yeah. the 70s. So, yeah. Uh, 
And then, have you seen... Do you have Amazon Prime as well as Netflix? Yeah. They've now just dropped a Ted Bundy type series. Oh, a new one. But, yeah, it's What's not What's left Kate. to say, though? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> but, because I was like, I just, just saw it, because we've... Me and the parents have decided to binge house. Okay. So we have, like, gotten through, like, four seasons in a month. It's so. never lupus, by the way. Like, doesn't matter how many times they reference it, it'll never be lupus. I know. Sure. It's never lupus. It's never lupus. It's never lupus. <laughs> but um, I might actually make a hoop that says it's never lupus. It's never lupus. Um, but I saw in like recent, recently added, yeah. there was, it, it looks very similar to the screen grab for the Ted Bundy tapes right. series. And I was like, how do they have, what, what is, what's going on here? What kind of rights it weirds is me Dan, out, are like they doing here? I, I had this thought the other day of when I was going through Prime, because I do, I do a classic thing of I go through Prime. Mm trying to find something to watch and then when i can't find something to watch i go over to netflix <laughs> Two hours and, to watch it, yeah. and there's a lot of shows which are on both and i was like am i paying twice for things which i'm getting twice is there a lot of crossover there's like there's a fair amount of crossover and i realize like a lot of people can own rights at the same time yes because it depends on the distribution yeah. of the, that particular production but like you say with, with that whole especially down the true crime line, the amount of like documentaries which have the same content, same outcome. And I, I, I'm like, I don't know if it's worth it investing in another one of those. I suppose it, yeah. You just watch Mindhunter and it'll tell me oh, everything around. I love Mindhunter. <laughs> <gasps> oh. Surprisingly managed to actually work a lot whilst watching that because it's heavily dialogue. Oh, I can't do anything. It's one of the few shows where I can't do anything else. I just have to watch you it. You have to stare at it. Yeah. I have to like listen to everything and, and watch it. Like I, I'm one of those people who can single task. I have to be doing something else. Mm. I have to like I'm watching a film. I'm this sketching. is why yeah. I started embroidering because yeah. I was, was just sitting in front of the TV. Like my hands need to be doing something right now, and need, I'm not a great drawer. I need something. I was like, I just need something like mindless. Yeah. And the good thing about sewing is that you get into a rhythm, and it's yeah. quite calming, and it's just lovely. It's yeah, just lovely. It's just lovely. <laughs> so that's where I started, and then yeah. I got obsessive with it. And, you know, I've thing... had my wrist in a brace about three times. <laughs> this is, yeah. I mean, you have a repetitive motion task yes. to do. Yes. I'm actually very worried about carpal tunnel. <laughs> like arthritis. Yes. Everything like that. Yep. Carpal You're tunnel. You're kind of doing like... yourself. Like, Ish. Down the line. Ish. Which is why. But then you, you take you breaks. You start though, charging don't you? more eventually. Well, yeah, I do take yeah. breaks. I mean, the dogs make me take breaks. Yeah. And, you know. I just have to sometimes move and get food and take breaths away. But a lot of the time, I could easily go from, like, if I start at 10 a.m., I could yeah. easily not eat until 4 yeah. and just be sat there working on something. Especially if I have, like, a deadline in my head of wanting to get something done. Yeah. Or if I'm just into it. I, find, I always find it interesting with, like, artists uh, have a medium which does require physical strain. It's like when you see um, people who do like pointillism and like mm. dot work and understand. they're going for like hours and hours and hours. And then mm. there's been quite a few cases where people have been like, yeah, I physically can't do it anymore because it causes me pain. And I'm like, th you don't think about it at the time. Mm. You just never think it's, you know, it's art, it's creating, mm. it's never going to physically damage me. And then hours down the line, you're like, oh, I can't move my neck. Yeah. It's the same as, it can be the same as a manual labor job, yeah. like the strain and essentially the stress it puts on your body it can be yeah. the same as you know being a builder being a brookie like yeah it's just as bad in some ways like if i sit with my legs crossed for two hours my knees are done yeah and i will i mean i've got a bum knee anyway but it will be in agony and i had to i mean last year um i took about three days i couldn't do anything because my knee was in spasm yeah and i just had to have it unrest on the sofa watched a lot of tv that day <laughs> but like it's a really week, clear theme with yeah, your life but I, I'm, I can't be in silence no so okay I've, i'm trying to come a, away from having the tv on and having more like podcasts on yeah but it's really easy to just put a sim stream on and not have to like pay yeah. that much attention i just sort of look up every now and then and then essentially it's just dialogue yeah it's more just funny do people make narratives in sims yes like oh, yeah. full dramas oh yeah that's what all the let's plays are about okay and most of the time they are challenge based okay so um and uh, what in mostly i suppose because if sims have been releasing a lot of packs this year mm. 
so a lot of like the let's plays have been pack based so in exploring that pack and the features of that pack and yeah. there's usually a drama behind it but like with james he um started a let's play with a character called lady big wallet for when um what was it was it when get to work came out so like that was the first expansion no get together was the first expansion pack. but get to work was one of the expansion packs that came out that basically the one where you can make retail lots mm-hmm. and run your own shop right so you can um, live completely within Sims and never have to leave. <laughs> but um, <laughs> <laughs> so your Sims could have a retail shop and sell stuff and that yep. make them money that way. And so he did a rags to riches series with Lady Big Wallet. So you start with zero money on right. an empty lot, um, and you have to become rich and get the life aspiration of Mansion Baron and whatever else and filthy rich. So once he was done with that let's play in that character and all the sort of drama and story that ensued from it and it's pretty funny because sims has a lot of funny programming in it and Mm -hmm. glitches (laughs) that you can exploit quite easily um from that when he started his next rags to riches challenge with the next pack he made it the child of that character okay and has just been doing that essentially for five years (laughs) yeah so he's now at a point where He's had his self sim thrown into the sort of the canon of it all, and some crazy, mm. some real crazy thing. When he when he did a, a let's play with the Get Famous pack, that was wacky and kind of insane, but hilarious. I don't know why, but I like I love it when you. I know Sims is obviously essentially designed for stories because you're taking a mm. person and giving them mm-hmm. a life. I like it when people apply extra narrative to things which don't necessarily have it in the first place. Yeah. It's like, um, it's reminded me of, there was a show, I can't remember where it was shot, but essentially it was shot in an Ikea. They went to Ikea and they shot a whole sitcom using Ikea as sets. Easy. Nice. They did it yeah. completely without permission. They just took handy cams <laughs> and they'd shoot whole scenes just in really Ikea fun. as well so and it was amazing because they made this essentially drama this like soap opera drama sitcom within an Ikea and I was amazing. like that's amazing you you just applied narrative to something where you know you've got fully built sets yeah and the same with kind of like Sims or anything like that where people just add that extra little character mm-hmm. to things it just it makes and that's nice I think stuff. part of the whole YouTube generation okay because the access to and Twitch as well, like the access to be able to stream it and to share yeah. it with others and get others to comment and be invested in it. I think yeah. that lends itself more to narrative development because yeah, when I play just on my own for me, I could, I mean, I could easily sit there and play for 12 hours, but I don't know what I'd do. <laughs> I'd maybe spend three hours building a house yeah. and then one hour building the bloody sim. And then I'll basically just play through their lives, but yeah. very vanilla. I'm curious. Do you think you'd ever blend essentially your darker interests mm. with your lighter interests? Or do you Possibly. like having that line? I don't know. There's room anything is possible. <laughs> you know, there's room for development in any way. Um But I guess Yeah, at some point eventually possibly. Okay. Cuz I there I mean to me it's curious cuz it's like <laughs> I mean the child labor challenge is kind of touching yeah, on no, it a no, little bit. I mean, I mean like <laughs> So, like, obviously you have, well, not you, but, like, any artist or any person Mm -hmm. has, they have things which they're interested in, and then other things which they're interested in, they use that as an escape. So you can go make something nice and light, because Mm -hmm. it's an escape from, you know, if you draw horror all the time. Mm -hmm. Um, Fair. I know a particular artist who has two sides of her own craft. One's horror and one's light and fluffy. Yeah. So as soon as you start to blend those, you kind of lose that disconnect, because if that thing which you blend becomes the main thing you do mm-hmm. you suddenly don't have an escape oh. <laughs> so you'd have to Chills. find something else yeah i, I see that a, like a um a i think i don't know because i suppose if i was to go darker with say my embroidery there, there isn't a lot of color in that <laughs> and maybe that's the beauty of it, i though. suppose it's because it's such a long time spent on it it might yeah. affect me negatively and i don't know how i'd feel about it okay because yeah in a way you know the act of embroidery and sort of that craft in itself is a positive on mental health yeah like the action of it the rhythm of it just the creating of it you know it's already proven in so many other cases that it's you know it's good for mental health yeah um 
And I've definitely found that with myself. So I don't know if I was to then invest in incorporate a horror element or a dark element. I don't know how I would react. Or maybe I'll try it and see. Yeah. But I don't know why I, draw- I can't draw <laughs> horror, I don't think. <laughs> it's like tattoo horror. I don't know. I think as far as I'd go, it'd probably be like a bloody knife. <laughs> I don't know, because that's the other thing like, as well. Like traditional tattoos, mm. there tends to be a lot of dark yeah, there themes, is. especially nowadays. There's like, a lot of dark theming, yeah, but yeah. it's all wrapped up in a pretty little bow. You can make it as dark as you want, as long as it's nicely coloured. True. I mean, I do have a sad shark, which is okay. kind of depressing, but he is pretty. Sad shark. And he just wants to be loved. It's just a, a shark that's crying with swimming. a scroll that says, I deserve love too. It's because sharks aren't loved very much. That's, that's probably the, I, the darkest I've so got. <laughs> I mean, I don't know what it looks like, but I'm picturing in my head and it's just a frowning shark. He's like, he's literally just like, ah, like crying. <laughs> It's like a little tear coming down his face and okay. just on like a bed of, of tattoo roses and it's just a scroll on it, like on his fin that just yeah. says, I deserve love Absolute. too. And it's just in a little um, four or five inch shoot because he's in a four. I like it. On denim. On denim. Yeah. And he's all colourful, but sad. <laughs> I, I love, love him, that. and a lot of people have loved him, but not adopted him. I feel, I feel like bad you could for him do like a he's... lot of series on that. <laughs> I probably could. Just yeah. a series. I mean, just I did my little sad shark. I did a calendar of depressed animals. Yes, you did. Yeah. Which is, I mean, that was it. Started off as me just venting mm-hmm. initially, um, and then I was like, it just lends it so nicely to it. But you could easily do like a series of sad, sad predators. Sad predators. <laughs> yeah, those yeah. are not totally accepted by society as yeah. adorable creatures even though there is obviously a huge community that do love sharks yes but it's I not know the... someone specifically who is obsessed with sharks i know someone specifically who's obsessed with sharks <laughs> probably not the same person no i'd imagine not the same not. but yeah it's not unheard of no but yeah it, i just find it even more sad that he's not found his forever <laughs> home yet he's doomed to yeah. float alone oh <laughs> float <laughs> and they float when they're dead <laughs> even then they sink to the bottom of the ocean <laughs> so it's getting yeah. gradually darker for him sometimes I mean that could lend itself to a series but I don't know I've not really thought about doing a series of like a character or you do tend like to do that. singular pieces I've noticed hmm. rather than like continuations yeah and I don't know if that's just because I need to get it out of my brain okay because I'm still fairly not new to it but new to it yeah and because it's only been a couple of years it's just sort of all these ideas in my brain i'm like just get it out get it yeah. out just churn it out but not churn it out because it takes like 17 hours <laughs> this i think this is why in a way like when i started following you i was fascinated because on instagram not in life yeah uh, yeah <laughs> <laughs> followed you slid into your dm just like yeah this is gonna work. no so it's like i mean when i work i hate when things take me too long like mm-hmm. drawing wise i this is why i have such a sketchy style because it's get it done get it out produce it and then refine it later on which just does take hours yeah and i'm like I, I could never do that i mean the final process of it takes hours yeah but yeah. i will just vomit it onto a page first it's the same with writing it's the same process of writing it's just you you know when you're looking at an empty page you just yeah. have to word vomit yeah and then find the nuggets from there it takes so long to find those nuggets but that's the process if you can't do that you're not going to be good at it and therefore it's just a waste of time anyway no it's just there's a level of patience with it which i I guess i don't have i mean like yeah when i started doing it my mom literally turned to me and said i don't know how you can have the patience to do that i was gonna ask like does your is anyone else in your family do anything like this apparently and i didn't even know this until i basically almost finished my hoodie my mom turned to me and said oh yeah your grandma used to so she was a seamstress and her mother was. And I was like, oh, great. Good to oh, know now, trans- mother. Thank yeah. you. Why didn't you push me into textiles when I was younger? Great. I could be better at this by now. <laughs> but then you'd resent it and you would have, like, Probably, deviated yeah. from it and been writing My in your spare time. My parents were good. They let me do what I wanted in terms of, like, education and stuff. But, yeah, so I guess weirdly it is in the blood. Yeah. Like, at least on my German side. I don't think on my English side. I mean, on my English side, it's basically just military. Which is probably where my darker side comes to it. But that's part of my family has seen war, and that's what I write about. No. Yeah. Uh, um, yeah, so I think, 
yeah, it's kind of the blood, but yeah. I've never been taught by anyone in my family. Like, I've not seen it by anyone in my family. Um, one of my mum's brothers is a very creative man. He's a musician and he's very hippie-ish. He lives a bit of a hippie life. Lots of tie-dye and his wife is very crafty. Okay. Um, but, like, I didn't spend a lot of time with him or around yeah. him growing up or anything like that. So, it's just something oddly, you started to do. I am a bit of a black sheep in my family. Yes. Although my brother is creative and he's, like, a product designer, so he is right. artistic. And he was very good at art when he was in high school. Yeah. I was not very good at art, but I did it anyway. <laughs> That's the best thing because about Because persistence. <laughs> <laughs> I wanted to be very good, but I wasn't. Um, and I, So, yeah, we're the more creative ones in our family, but that, yeah. I think we'd get that from our dad because my mum isn't artistic at all. Okay. Which is weird. So I get the artism, artistic... Artism. The artism. artism. Nice. I, I like new that. word. Yeah, I new got phrase. my artism, artism. I'm from my father, <laughs> but seamstressing and sewing is on my mother's side which is just but you've blended weird. them nicely which is why I'm just you know meant to be me <laughs> I guess you never I am even the knew product it. <laughs> so yeah if they ever complain to me I'm like well yeah. I am the product of your lives <laughs> so that is something I say to my mom whenever she's like you know you've done this thing and I'm, I'm not sure where it came from it's like yes but you raised me so <laughs> You're responsible this for This is your happens. fault. <laughs> if I ever get arrested, I'm blaming both of you. Yeah. And mm -hmm. we'll go down that line. Pretty much. Yeah. I don't not, think you can avoid becoming your parents in some way. True. Yeah. yeah. It's a little bit terrifying. But I know that I have more patience than my mother, and that means I'm more prepared for life. I could be, yeah. So, wait, so is your, is your mum more military or your dad more military? Dad's, Dad's side military. is military. Mum's side is German. <laughs> But non-military non German. German. Non-Hitler German. <laughs> Just to clarify. Just to clarify. Do you have to clarify that every time? Is Pretty, that like a responsibility? I mean, I went, growing up, I was called Nazi. So, yes. Well, yeah. I do have to clarify kids. it. Yeah. Whenever Maybe I say, oh, I'm from patience. Germany. And they're like, you know this happened there? It's like, no, no. really? <laughs> Who knew? We were separated. Yeah, we're, we're West, not yeah. East. <laughs> we are West. That's fair. Yeah. Maybe that's why you have patience, then. I mean, it's a reason for background. a lot of things. Yeah. It's a reason for my efficiency, my organization, <laughs> um, my bluntness in a lot of cases. Um, but I guess in some ways my innovativeness? Mm -hmm. Innovation? Innovation. Artism. Um, artism? <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's a word. It's definitely the word. What was the... Oh, I'm trying to think what the title was earlier. I might make a t-shirt that says, I have artism. I'm, I'm artism, yeah. I like it. I think, yeah, I think these are good points to round the town of how you came to be, <laughs> so to speak. I'm proud of my German heritage. Yeah. I wear it more on the front than my English heritage. I prefer it, weirdly. Well, I mean, England doesn't have a great track record. True. I mean, a lot of flat comes up for other countries, but we do not have a we're And not it's a modern nice times place. are worse off than German's modern times, yes. so there's that. Yeah. You get two passports, though, don't you? I have two passports, yeah. yes. Which is why I'm not that worried about Brexit. So jealous. Not that we're mentioning Brexit. No. I've managed, I've done very well in the podcast. Mm -hmm. I thought about this the other day, that I've Did only... Did you do one solely on? I've done one uh, on Brexit. To say it's been going for like three years. True. Only one of them was about Brexit. And now this one. No. <laughs> to we'll round avoid. this out for another we'll hour. Yeah. Um, yeah, so I'm not too worried, but it was a blip there with my mother because she's not necessarily no british no but it's fine but i'm assuming married so yeah but that stay. doesn't count no apparently that doesn't count she still had to apply for residency just move to germany Ugh, tell me about it <laughs> <laughs> if only didn't love lincoln for whatever reason don't know why but no, there you go i don't know if i'd survive germany anymore to be fair i've been to germany once no, My I sister's there now. Yeah. She's moved recently. So there's that. Future times. So you're going to start live streaming? Yes. You're going to do more embroidery? Duh. <laughs> it's my job. So. You're going to yeah. write? I want to. Yeah. I want to get back into it. It's been too long. Yeah. 
basically because in my dissertation for my mate i had to essentially write half a book right so i want to finish that book and then try my hand at getting it published etc but it's just doing it and then putting the time aside to do it and yeah. taking the time away from the jobs to do it yeah um and that's not that easy like i was supposed to in january and then i got sick so i didn't she's always a hindrance so i lost two weeks which i was like oh i spent that two weeks doing writing and it's like nope got the flu okay yeah. bye that's fair now i need to work on business stuff so great i know that's exciting times then for the rest of the year yes yeah. i need to figure out what my twitch name's gonna be i mean that's an important question <laughs> that'll be my new identity Definitely should be sad shark. Oh no, I'm not a shark. <laughs> and on that point, we'll bring this to an end. Okay. Thank you for coming on the podcast. Thank you for having me. That's all right. We're happy to get everyone creative on here. And, you know, it's been interesting. It's just been good. But we shall round this out and we will talk to these guys later. Bye. Bye.